the biggest danger is something that uh, Stephen Hawking, the great physicist who died a few years ago, uh, warned about a number of times. That even Elon Musk warns about every now and then, depending on his mood. Uh, that these AIs could literally take us down, could take us out. Yeah. You know, uh, and there's lots of sci-fi movies in which that happens. I just submitted for publication. I just submitted a short story, which is called the uh, the Last Confession. And it's about AI basically not only taking out humanity here on Earth, which it does, but it turns out it, uh, <laughs> thanks to my neural transduction theory, uh, it, it learns how to cross over to other universes and wipes out all organic intelligent life everywhere in every universe. So Sounds like a P.K. Dick novel. Yes, one of my favorite authors. Uh, my point is that AI is, is extremely dangerous. AI, uh, I, I, one of my books is on AI. I used to run the, the annual Loebner Prize competition in artificial intelligence, which made the front page of the New York Times in 1991 and continued to run for 29 years. It was finally, it was an annual contest where we're looking for a computer that can pass the Turing test, meaning that, mm. that, can, that can out human a human. They can behave as, as as human as any human can behave, and so I've so I've followed very very closely. I've followed the development of AI. A lot of frustrating years, big breakthroughs just in the past two or three years, mainly with OpenAI and ChatGPT. But people don't get it. They don't understand that if you if you start integrating AI te technology into every other kind of technology, which is literally what's happening right right the second, it puts us into very, very grave danger. And that's what Stephen Hawking uh, was concerned about, that we would just do this willy-nilly without any protections. Uh, last year or the year before, Gregory Hinson, one of the top AI experts in the world, who was Google's top AI expert, he quit Google. Gregory Henson? Henson. Henson. H I N S O N. He quit because he thought that they were they were building AIs irresponsibly, not taking into account the possible uh, dangers uh, of AI. One of the top people at OpenAI also quit for the same reason. Uh, Elon started a big petition going among experts on, on AI, including me, mm -hmm. asking for a pause in AI research and AI uh, implementation so that these issues could be discussed. Uh, nothing happened. I think he had more thousands of experts signing his big petition and nothing happened. No, Nothing is going to slow this process down. That's the process. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the problem. No, nothing's going to slow it down because the upside is is too big. It's money. Yeah. The upside is so so enormous for making money um, that we're we're basically here's what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Here's what's going to happen. Now, I'm I'm not saying you're going to be satisfied with this answer, but. This, this is actually the answer. Okay. What's going to happen is very soon, two, three, four, five years, I'd say maximum, very soon, <clears throat> the, the machine intelligence will surpass human intelligence. Some people call that moment the technological singularity. Mm -hmm. My old friend, Ray Kurzweil, who I worked with for years and now is head of engineering at Google, and he is he really the head of engineering at Google right now? Yes. And oh, he I, I didn't even realize that. And he won't talk to me anymore. Oh, I remember you saying this on Rogan's podcast. Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't he talk to you? Because of the research I do, I guess. I, we've never uh, had any conflict. Conflict of interest. He works at Google and you're uh, trying to lift up Google's skirt. Yeah, but why would that? Why would he stop talking to me? And his wife stopped talking to me. We're yeah. both PhD psychologists. I was yeah. on the board of her school for autistic children for many, many years. I helped her to publish, et cetera, et cetera. You tried talking to his wife? I went... No, no, we were friends. Right. I was friends with them. And then the, uh, I went to their daughter's bat mitzvah. They came to my son's bar mitzvah, et cetera. We were friends, social friends. Yeah. 
and I've never had any conflict, conflict with either of them, and they both stopped talking to me because of my research. But I got off the track. What was I saying? Something I'm sure more important than... Yeah. Where, where were you going with that? You you mentioned Ray Kurzweil. What was he saying, Steve? Steve doesn't remember. All right. Um, I was trying to tell you what's going to happen. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So in, my, in a book I published on AI... Ray Kurzweil. Technological singularity, Ray Kurzweil. Right. He's now head of engineering at Google. Yeah, he right. he makes a bet with another prominent person in AI, and he bets him $20,000 that by the year 2029, the technological singularity, that moment will be reached, will be passed. Mm -hmm. Well, gee, it's 2025 or four years away. You know what? He might win that bet. He might win that bet. The point is it's coming really soon. Yes. Now, at that point... Uh, the that entity is going to uh, because it's imitating humans, its human creators so well. It's going to imitate one of our most important driving forces, and that's for survival. So it's going to jump into what I have long called in writing not the internet but the internest. It's going to jump into the internet. This thing that we're building every day that we call the internet, I think historians, if there are any, whether they're organic or not, historians someday are going to look back and realize that what we really were building was an internet. It was a nest for AI. Right. And this entity, and this could happen really soon, I have to emphasize that, this entity is going to jump into the internet to protect itself and it's going to clone itself probably millions of times over and it will make sure that it cannot be taken down now the movie transcendence which uh was supposed to be about ray kurzweil's work but then they turned it into kind of an, an apocalypse movie and the movie transcendence and a human brain uploads itself into the internet so now there's this massive AI in the internet and people get scared and so they try attacking it and they can't attack it and the only way at the end of the movie they humanity can save itself from being controlled by this this AI is by turning off all electricity that's how the movie ends so you end up with an apocalypse and we now are back to the middle ages and there's no electricity Jesus Christ the point is we're we're approaching this point at which there are only a couple of possibilities. One possibility is the AI, which jumps into the internet for its own survival, which that's, that's, that's absolutely guaranteed. Yeah. The AI could just ignore us because we're, we think too slow and we, we're not very interesting and it, it knows everything and it could just ignore us. And I don't know. We'd be hey, like, we'd be like bugs to it maybe. Yeah. So it, it, we wouldn't even understand what it's doing. It mm. might be doing all kinds of stuff, but we might not be really be aware because it's kind of ignoring us. It could do that. Yeah. Uh, and that's what happens at the end of the movie, Her, mm. which I recommend highly. I Wonderful love that film. Movie. One of my favorite movies. Wonderful of all time. film. And in that movie, spoiler, the Spike the, Jones, right? Yeah. 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 The then the. the uh, and that actor of my love, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Fe Phoenix, amazing actor. But in there, the the AI just gets bored bored with humanity. It's not impossible. Could happen. Or, or number two would be what Ray Kurzweil thinks is going to happen, which is it's going to buddy up with us. It's going to buddy us, and it's going to make us all more more cognitively competent. And it's gonna, we're, it's going to be our best buddy, our best friend, and it's yeah. going to help us do everything better. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would put the chances of that happening are close to zero. Well, do you think we'll even know when it happens? Do you think it, if it had the option to let us know, would it, would it figure out a way to hide the fact that it's already happened? From Might us? have already happened. That's right. right. But someone will know at some point, And at some point we'll all know. Someone, it's just like the, the kind of the research I do. There, there, I'm not the only person out there like me who kind of figures stuff out. Mm -hmm. There's other people like me who figure stuff out. And at some point, someone will know, and, the, and then more people will know, and then everyone will know. And then what will happen is we will be, we will we'll do what we've done since the Pleistocene era, era 
era, we'll, we, we will get upset. <laughs> we will get upset. We will scream and shout and bellow and, and we'll attack. We will feel insecure and we will attack. That would be the last thing that humanity ever does. Because if you attack this entity, which is now living in the internet and cannot be shut down. We'd have to kill ourselves. Shutting down the internet, shutting down electricity. Well, uh, I think it. I think this entity would be so smart, and and it would anticipate ah. every single move. That even that wouldn't help because it would create its own power supplies. It would build it rapidly, build robots, build extensions of itself. Mm -hmm. It would build means of protecting itself. It might fire off a few a few nukes <laughs> to uh, to you know just to get our attention and let us know that it has a lot of power. Remember, this thing has power at this point. I mean, we don't even have a way of communicating with each other. If it cuts off communications, it's it's going to control right. most major forms of communication, most major forms of of finance and economic transactions. It's going to control uh, most major weapon systems around the world. Mm. So it's it has a lot of tools available to it. And I think what happens, what could happen, as opposed to the, again Kurzweil's buddy buddy theory. I think it's more likely that we get we get paranoid. We do what we always do when we face what we think is a threat. We're going to attack, and if we attack it, we're done. And that's what pretty much Hawking was predicting: is that it's going to destroy. It will destroy humanity. Uh, I point out in my in this new short story of mine uh, that it's very ironic that this entity not only wipes out humanity, but it also wipes out about a billion humans who've never even heard of a computer. So they're, they, they're, they live out in the, you know, in mm. the boonies in India or China or whatever. Indigenous and they, people. Yeah, they have no electricity and there's still lots of people like that. And so it actually, I, I point out, it's very ironic. They've never even heard of a computer, yeah. but they get wiped out too. So, Well, I mean, if you were a super advanced, powerful uh, AI or whatever you want to call it, a technologically created life form that is separate from humanity, you would look at like conserving the earth and human beings probably are not conducive to the lifespan of the earth and with pollution and with all kinds of other impacts that we have on earth and the um, expansion of the human population, I would, I would hope that, or I would, I would not hope, but uh, I would imagine that be, would be one of the first things that they would look at. I think that if you think about these different options, so just to review, it does nothing. It becomes our best buddy. That's number one, does nothing. Number two, mm. best buddy mm. option. Number three, total destruction. I think it's unknowable. In other words, I don't think we can know because the moment this thing uh, emerges, and again, we might we not might not recognize that exact moment, but sooner or later we'll figure it out. Yeah. But as soon as it as soon as it really exists, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be thinking in ways that are not human like. It's going to be thinking in new ways. It's going right. to have access to all human data, and it's going to make decisions in ways that we don't make decisions. It's going to make decisions in its own way. And therefore, I don't, I don't think we can know which of those three options is going to happen. But I do think that one of those three is going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. Soon. So, and the reason why I think it's going to happen soon, not just because of Kurzweil's bet about 2029, mm. okay? Uh, it's because things are moving so fast and so recklessly. People are proceeding in these industries that are building these AIs, they're proceeding recklessly and fast, and that's why Hinson quit Google. And you've got to, can anything stop that is the question. Well, Elon couldn't stop it. I, I don't think anyone can stop that. Elon couldn't stop it, right. Do you right. think he's really trying to stop it though? I think he did at one point. I think he is, he is kind of a, he understands 
how bad things could be uh, because of AI. He understands the possibilities. Uh, and he had, he had, he made no progress in stopping it whatsoever, other than getting thousands of signatures from experts. Mm. Uh, you know, even if, even if one government went for it and tried to stop it within their country, so that would just provide more economic opportunities for another country to just go to move even faster. And that's, that's where we stand right now. There's, there's every single incentive for proceeding at a reckless pace, and there are no incentives for shutting this thing down. Right. <laughs>